Zero Accounting Software 2023. Assign expenses to a customer or project. Get ready to become an accountant hero with Zero 2020. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Three. Here we are in our custom Zero homepage, going into the new company file we set up in a prior presentation, that being Get Great Guitars, duplicating some tabs to put reports in like we do every time, right click in the tab up top so we can duplicate it. Right click in that tab up top again so we can duplicate it again. Back to the tab to the middle, we're gonna go into the accounting dropdown and open the balance sheet report. And then we'll tab to the right go to the accounting drop down and this time open up the profit and loss or income statement i'm going to go back to the left tab hit the drop down for the date and customize that date bringing it on up to 2023 the end of it and update the form if i go to the income statement it is from january to december 2023 so it looks good to go from the start let's go back to the first tab now and now we're going to be entering a few expenses that we are imagining that we want to pull on over to bill a customer for. Now we touched on this technique with some inventory items, but it's more likely that you would use this in a job cost kind of system. Say if you have a bookkeeping firm or something like that, or a construction type of system, where when you're paying for your expenses, you wanna pull those expenses over into the invoice. So let's take a look at a flow chart real quick here. If I take a look at a flow chart, we have kind of a crossover between the vendor cycle, which is gonna be the outflow. By the way, this is a QuickBooks desktop flow chart, but we're just looking at it to look at the flow of standard documents through the accounting process. So we're gonna have an outflow. We're gonna be spending money on stuff. And then as we do so, we wanna say, hey, look, I would like to include what I spent the money for on a client invoice. So that's gonna mean that when we get into the invoice side of things, we're gonna to start to build our invoice by the things that we spent the money on, which is typical in, like I say, a job cost type of thing. And you might use, say, projects in that uh, type of system, tracking your costs by the project. Now we have to be careful when we do this because when we're up top and we're recording it as an expense, we're gonna have it an, an outflow of cash. The other side go into an expense like supplies expense or something like that or automobile expense or gasoline expense as we normally would. But when we pull it into the invoice, we would typically like to have the line item say, hey, look, customer, this is you, uh, us charging you for an expense related to automobile or supplies or whatever. But usually we don't wanna actually decrease the supplies expense, treating it as like a reimbursement in terms of the expense account going down but rather we normally want the income account uh, to go up. We just wanna be adding the line items to the invoice in terms of how we're getting to that bottom line amount that's gonna be on the invoice that we're charging the customers for, which we wanna put on the top line item as sales or revenue. So let's take a look at some examples of this. Now we set up our jobs in, in the past or projects so if you hit the drop down and the projects is usually over here if you haven't turned it on and then you get this projects tab up top. If I go into the projects, we have the two projects for 3005, 4002, which are tied to customers, Jones Guitars and Sam the Guitar Man. So now we're gonna enter a normal type of expense. I'm gonna hit the plus button up top and let's say we're gonna say spend money form. So money's going out. Usually when that happens, it's because we're paying for some kind of expense that we need in order to help us generate revenue in the business. And let's say that this is gonna go to, I'm just gonna type in Office Depot. So we have Office Depot and we'll say it happens on January. Let's hit this one, Jan 
uh, Jan 30th. Jan 30th. And so there we have it. And then the item. So I'm going to put in here. Now notice I'm not going to use an item because we're not going to be buying inventory items. So I'm just going to put, we could put the descriptions, supplies that we're going to be purchasing in quantity one. I'm just going to say the price of them. I'm going to say is 130. We're going to assign it to the expense account of supplies. Do we have a supplies expense? We do. There's the supplies expense. And then I want to be able to, when I pull this over to the customer, for it to pull this onto the customer side of things. So we can do that by having this button down below, which says assign expenses to a customer or project. So I'm gonna select that, and then we could select the customer or project. I'm gonna say 3005, which was our project that we set up. So we could assign it to a customer or the project, go into the, the project number. And then I only have one line item, so I'm just gonna pick that line item and say that that supplies I want to assign it to the customer. Note that before you hit the big blue OK, you want to make sure you select assign. So we're going to assign it. So now it has been assigned and then click OK. If you just hit OK, it won't assign it. So if I go back in here now and I take a look at it again, you can see that it has been assigned. It's over here on the right hand side. If I close this out, note you can also see it here where it says Jones Guitars 3005. Now before I record this, also note you want to make sure that you have a description which is something that you would like to be pulling over to the invoice because when we create the invoice it's not going to pull over the account name it will be pulling over the description so when we record this normal transaction decreasing checking account the other side going to supplies but it will also be available for us to populate an invoice with for the project 3005 so i'm going to record it let's just take a look at it go into the balance sheet updating the balance sheet and then going into the checking account just to see the normal transaction that has been recorded and scrolling on down we've got then the 130 there scrolling back up back to our report let's go to the income statement update it and the other side should be of course on the supplies expense showing the expense so it should be here so there's the 130 there that looks good going back now let's take a look at the project now if it wasn't a project but just a customer i might run like a billable expense type of report but here i'm tracking by the project so i want to go into the project icons so we'll go into like the all projects and then we assign that to 3005. So if I go into 3005 and scroll down, you see the supplies down here. Now note that you might have a system where you wanna kind of mark it up before you add it to an invoice. So notice it hasn't really been added to the to be invoiced column yet. It's, it's in the time and expenses, but not to the add to the invoice side. So what we can do is we can go into this item and then and we can see the general information here, the date, the quantity, the, the markup, the unit price, and so on and so forth. And we can create the invoice from this area. So it has the draft invoice, So I can, or we can go to the bill. So I can then go into the invoice from here, and then it'll populate uh, the invoice. Notice it pulled in the description. So it's going uh, to uh, Jones Guitars, and then, and then it populated the description. So let's make this as of uh, January 30th. So I'm gonna bring this back to January 30th as well. Invoice reference standard form. Notice that no item is being populated here because uh, we pulled over just kind of, we made it billable. We didn't have an item. It's not an inventory item that pulled over. What did pull over is the description. Plus it gave us the little reference down below referencing the uh, project. It pulled over the amount. It doesn't give us an account because it doesn't know the account to go to because that's usually populated by the item. So then we can go in here and assign an account. Now it's important, I oftentimes when I've seen people basically pull in something from a billable item, sometimes they, they feel like it's a reimbursement type of situation. So they go in here with the account and they put in supplies expense, right? And that means that the supplies expense account went up and then back down again. That's not typically what we want to do. Usually you want to put it into a revenue account. I just want to show you what not to do just so we can see uh, uh, the difference between these two things. So sometimes people 
you might say, well, it's it's a reimbursement, so I'm gonna put it into supplies, right? And because because they're repaying me for the supplies that I that I got, so I didn't really pay for the supplies, they paid me for the supplies, right? That would be the idea. But usually you want it in the revenue account, and I'll just show, show a demonstration of the two, the difference between the two. Now notice if you if you needed to mark it up, at this point when you created the invoice, you could then add another line item, which would and say it was a 30% markup or something like that, or we could change uh, the unit price here if we wanted to mark it up from there. But let's go ahead and approve it. So this is an invoice, so it's gonna be increasing the the accounts receivable. The other side's gonna go to not revenue because we assigned it to an expense account, which is not exactly right here, but then it's gonna track also the project that it was assigned to 3005. So let's approve it. And uh, the due date field, let's put that in February. We'll say February 28th. Let's try it again. And approve it, por favor. Okay, so if I go back to the balance sheet then and update it, we should have in accounts receivable. If I go into the AR accounts receivable, we should have revenue. Scrolling down, we're gonna have uh, the, the revenue for the 130 uh, in the accounts receivable. And then the other side going back on over and on the income statement, updating it. Notice normally you would think it would be in the sales because I've recorded the expense down here, but instead we put it to the reimbursement of the expense, which is not generally what you wanna do, but I've seen people do that. So you wanna be careful not to do this in essence, because really what you wanna say is that I know this is a reimbursement of my expense, but I wanna put it on the, on the revenue side so that the income statement has revenue minus expenses. Otherwise, what's happening is I'm lowering my expense account here. Notice the net impact on net income is the same uh, either method, but it doesn't give you the detail of the revenue, what you're charging versus uh, the expenses, revenue minus expenses. It's netting out kind of a reimbursement on the expense side of, side of things. So I'm gonna go back on over. If I go into my project uh, over here, go into my projects, all projects, then we're gonna go into 3005 and we can take a look at our profitability and, and see our profitability and the invoiced uh, amount here uh, calculated and we can run the reports by project if we so choose. All right, so let's do this again and we could like start on the project. So let's go into all projects here and this time let's go into 4002 and let's add basically the expense uh, from this side of things. Well, I'll still go up and add the expense up top here though. I'm gonna say up top, I'm just gonna make sure we're gonna go to 4002 and I'm gonna say spend money form. So I'm gonna imagine we have money going out again. It's gonna go out of the checking account. And then I'm gonna say, this is gonna be Office Depot again, Office Depot. And we're gonna say that this happened on January uh, 30th again. And we're gonna say description is supplies. And we're gonna say that this is one and, or let's say quantity one and 200. So let's go 200 this time. And then I wanna assign it to the supplies account supplies same process but then assign expenses to a customer or a project and we want to go to 4002 sam the guitar man check it off make sure that we assign it which will populate it over here on the right hand side and when i hit okay with the big blue button i should see it down here as well now note again i didn't assign an item to it so what's going to pull over when i pull it over to the invoice not the account because the account, it doesn't know what account to assign it to on the income side, it will pull over the description. So we wanna make sure, even though you're gonna say, well, the account says supplies, you wanna put supplies in the description if you're gonna pull it into the invoice so it'll populate when we pull it over on the invoice side. What's this going to do? It's gonna be decreasing the, uh, the checking account. The other side's gonna be going to the supplies expense account and it should pull into the project so we can make an invoice from it. Let's save it and then check it out. So we'll save that, go on over to the balance sheet, update the balance sheet, go into the checking account, check out the checking and see K Paso a key. And we'll scroll down and uh, we see then the 200 right there. That makes sense. 
and then going back let's go to the income statement update the report and go into the supplies once again we should have the supplies item and so i'm going to scroll down and say okay now we've got the supplies uh for the 200 now instead of reversing it out when i record the invoice i want to make sure to record it as revenue to see the difference between these two so i'm going to go back on over and let's go back to the first tab and then go to the projects drop down all projects and let's take a look at 4002 if i scroll down now we've got the supplies item down here if i go into it then it has the abil ability to edit and assign now when i go into it so this is what else so now we can we can edit it so it's a supplies account track to estimate date uh quantity the price is pulling over and here's where we have the option to mark it up if we want to so if we wanted to mark it up we could or we could just pass uh, the cost on so I'm going to say pass the cost on to pull it into an invoice and then I'm going to hit save here and so now we have that uh, item in and it's now assigned so if I scroll up uh, those, that's the amount to be invoiced as a 1,800 and the one 1,000 so now I can make an invoice from that so if I go to the invoice drop down up top and I want to say tasks and expenses, for example. Here's my uh, my tasks. I'm looking at the expenses. So here's my expenses down below on the 200. And let's go say, let's say uh, up top, let's say save an open draft invoice. Let's go to that. And it should populate an invoice for us. So it gives us the name. Let's go to the, uh, the date. Bring it on back to January 30th end date let's go to feb february 28 let's say and then it populates everything down here again it pulls in the description just gives us the supplies and then the the project and so there we have that now we have to assign the account so i'm not going to assign the account to supplies this time but some kind of revenue account right that's where it should be going so possibly uh sales or service revenue let's go into service revenue and I'm not going to say it's going to have a tax rate for it. Notice the tax rate isn't populating automatically either because there's no item to drive that to, to populate it. So you need to, when we create the invoice, pulling this information in, make sure that we assign the proper account and uh, the tax. And then when we make the bill, we have a nice description to pull in so that the client can see what we're billing them invoicing them for what's this going to do it's going to increase the accounts receivable the other side this time is going to go to the proper revenue account and the uh project is going to be charged for this as well so we're going to say let's approve it and let's go back into it's thinking all right it's approved balance sheet update the balance sheet we should have an increase to the accounts receivable now going into the accounts receivable on the balance sheet scrolling down we've got the, uh this jones was the 130 here's the sam here's the 200 back to the report income statement let's update the income statement and then now we put it into the service which is where we wanted it to go so if i go into services we have it properly populated in the revenue account so that on the income statement now we're not having a reimbursement of the expense that's decreasing the expense accounts because the expense accounts usually only go up we shouldn't have them go down typically and so this would be the proper way to do it we build the client even though it's for the same amount it's going to net out to zero and you can't you can think of it as a reimbursement of the expense but it's revenue you, you expended the expense in order to help you to generate the revenue so we should be breaking those two line items out generally so let's go back on over to the first tab now and just note that we can track the invoices like we normally would we can we can say okay let's go to the business drop down and take a look at the invoices and so we've got our invoices that have been uh, populated we can look at them this way there's you know the sam the guitar man and jones guitars and we could say awaiting payment here are the invoices awaiting payment we could go into the contacts and we can go into the customers and look at them this way because remember that the projects are assigned to a customer so we're following up with 
uh, Sam the Guitar Man and, and Jones Guitars was the other project, I think. So I can go into uh, Sam the Guitar Man here and track the invoices this way. We can then go into the projects if we so choose. So I can go into my projects, all projects, and I can look at my reports on a project by project basis. I can go into the Jones Guitars. So here's the estimate. We didn't make any estimates. We have the invoiced amounts. Uh, the time and expenses and the to be invoiced. Notice that this to be invoice includes, I believe, some time that we actually did invoice. So if I go into my time here and if I had already invoiced this item, we can hit the drop down here and say mark as invoiced. So now it's been invoiced. And if I go back on over to my summary, then everything has been invoiced out and uh, our reports look good from that summary statement quotes and invoices and then the profitability gives us the, our nice summary of the profit uh, uh, which is the invoiced amount revenue minus the costs that we have assigned out we could take a look at the project financial report going into the project financial report and so here's our information here so the the project name project items we've got the expenses and then uh, the cost amounts the charge amounts and uh, the invoice amounts. We can also go into our reports on the right hand side, duplicate this tab and let's just take a look, quick look at the project reports. And so we can go in here and say, okay, let's go into our accounting and let's go into our reports. And then you have your various project reports. We can type in up top uh, project, inc uh, project detail project details, the old version, time and expenses. So let's go to project detail reports. And so then we'll make this going from uh, January. We want to say this is going to be in progress, all the in progress reports. And so here we've got our project detail for the two projects that we broke out. Let's open up another one, right click and duplicate and let's go into the reports up top. So we'll go into accounting reports and go into project reports. Now we've got the project detail. Let's go into the project summary report. Project summary report for, let's just take a look at the in progress ones. And so here we have it for Jones 3005, Sam the Guitar Man gives us a summary of the cost to charge the invoice on a line item. Let's take a look at another one. Let's go to the accounting and reports and go into the project reports. We got the project financials. Let's take a look at that one. And we can go into here and say, I'm just looking at the in progress items again. And so project financials cost charge invoiced amount and your profit percentage profit for the two projects and lastly let's take a look at that last one accounting reports and go into project and detailed time you got the project time and expense report if we go into that and we go into our in progress and so we have our time and expense reports. Okay, so notice that as the projects are populated, if I go back into this first tab and take a look at the all projects, then you can transfer the projects to being, you know, in progress versus draft versus closed, right? So uh, draft projects, when you start the projects, it's in progress. And then of course, when you're done with the project, you can move it into the closed, as you can see then being populated or shown on the reports. So for example, if I went into 3005 here and I go into the three dots, if I close the project and then go back to my project summary, now we only see this as open and then the closed project has now been moved on over to the closed project. All right. So let's go back on over to the tab to the right and open up our trial balance to see where we stand at this point in time. Accounting dropdown reports, opening up the trustee trial balance. So I'm going to go up top and type in trial balance and go into that. 
and then let's do our uh, date range change bringing it up to 2023 and the end of it running it so this is where we stand at this point in time so if your numbers tie out to these numbers great uh, if not it might be a date issue so so you can expand the date and see if there's a change see if that's changing the numbers if it is then drill down on the information go back to the source document and make a change to the date